kids, this is Auntie Mila, and the story tonight is Sadie's Cup. It's a really a sweet story. I really like the story. I always like the name Sadie, and I like the Sadie in this story. She was so brave. You'll see. You know, our verse tonight is Matthew 10, 42. And it says, if anyone gives a cup of cold water to the least of these, he shall not lose his reward. Just a cup of cold water. Jesus writes that down. Oh, that was so nice. She gave a cup of cold water, or he gave that man a cup of cold water. A little thing like that, Jesus appreciates, and he writes it down. You know, Jesus is a detailed person, and he writes all those little th nice things down that we do. Well, here goes our story. Sadie, her last name was Smithson. Sadie Smithson was born before 1900. She grew up in the town of Johnson Falls, West Virginia. And she grew up on a farm with brothers and sisters, a mother and a father. And they had cows, they milked their cows, and they gathered the eggs from the chickens. They had a real farm. And she liked to read and she was able to go to school and she just read and studied and she was a good girl she had a good heart well when she got to be a teenager she was getting close to graduating from high school she heard about the laurel literary society in that town and that is if you were educated and if you or if you had some something big about you you could join the club so when she graduated from high school, she wrote, filled out an application and she sent it to this club in the town. She thought, I would love to be part of that club. Oh, the, the fancy people go there and they read poetry and they read readings and it's so educated and oh, that's just what I want. I want to join that club so badly. She wanted to all through high school and she didn't think they would um, allow a girl to join. So she waited till she graduated, then she wrote out an application and she sent it to the club and then she waited. Oh, if she could just be part of that club, that would just be so wonderful because she loved to read books and they gave reviews on books. It was a real high society type of club. She waited and waited and waited for a letter and she got a letter back. Oh, it's from the literary club. She opened it and then her face dropped. And they said, uh, we're very sorry, but um, we've turned down your application uh, for now. And she thought, they won't let me join that club, but that's what I wanted to do. I love poetry, I love reading, I love, and she just cried. She just flopped on her bed and just sobbed. And then she had to get up because she had to go to work. She had a job after high school. And she went to work and so she thought and thought, they turned me down. I, there's nothing I want more than to be part of that society and go with the ladies with fancy hats and sit and drink fancy tea and listen to poetry. Oh, that's just what I wanted. That was the only thing she wanted in life. And so she thought and thought and thought. She said, I have an idea. I have a good idea. I'm gonna save my money. I'm gonna work so hard, I'm gonna save every penny that I don't need for living expenses. I'm gonna save my money and save my money. And then I'm gonna buy a ticket to Europe. I'm going to tour Europe. And then I'm going to write um, articles about Europe, Europe. And then when I come back, I bet they'll want me in their club because no one in Johnson Falls, West Virginia had been to Europe. And she says, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save my money and save it. And that's what she started doing, saving her money, just saving every penny. And she thought, when I come back, they will beg me to join their club. Then I will be in and I can drink fancy tea and I can wear fancy hats. And she said, that's exactly what I want to do. 
Now remember, she was born just before 1900, so this was getting um, up into um, 1910, 1911, 1912, 1913, 1914, and she had saved her money, and she found a professor and his wife that were going to Europe. And she asked if she'd go along. They said, oh, yes, you, you could be our traveling companion. So she went with this older couple. So she was going to have a really nice time. So they got on the boat. She took, packed her suitcase, told her parents and her siblings goodbye. And she was so excited. She was going to Europe. She was going to tour Europe. And she was with this older couple. They were very nice. He was a professor, and so he knew a lot about history. And he, so they sailed across the Atlantic Ocean. They got over there, and they, they, um, they started their journey. And, oh, they were having a nice time. They would stay in a hotel at night, get up, and, and the three of them, they were touring Europe. Oh, she was going to have such a nice time. Well, they got a taxi. taxi. They were in Belgium. Taxi. And they got a, a taxi. They paid this taxi, and he was going to take him to France, to Paris. And, oh, that was going to be just so dreamy. And so they got in the car, and they were driving, 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 driving. And she was looking out the window. <gasps> this is Belgium. Oh, look at him. Oh. And they got along really nice, the professor and his wife and Sadie. Driving along, driving along, and the sun started going down, and they were driving, driving. All of a sudden, the driver of the car stopped. He said, um, something's wrong. I think I took a wrong road. I thought, oh, dear. He says, I think I'm lost. And he said, I'm wondering which way I should go next. And, and <coughs> just then there was, pew, 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 pew. bullets flying over the car. They had just gotten on a battlefield. It was the beginning of World War I. And they got there just in time for the opening shots. <gasps> That's not what she had planned, or the professor either. He said, oh dear, well, what are we going to do? You better go, just go, go someplace. He said, oh, I don't know, should I turn that way? Or maybe that's the enemy's, or, or should I turn that way? And the taxi driver was looking around, and they go, pew, pew, pew. and they were d ducking down. He didn't know what to do, and the taxi driver finally just stopped. He found he was in a field, and Sadie was looking, and by this time it was getting dark, the sun was going down, and she looked down. She saw a soldier, and he was going, oh, oh, and she was water, water. I'm so thirsty, please, water. And she opened the door and jumped down, and she said, oh, sir, you are hurt. And he was bleeding. And she said, oh, oh, here, I have a cup. And she took the cup to the little spring, ran down and got it, and brought it back, and helped him sit up, held his head, and he was drinking. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. And he was so hurt. And and then the taxi driver was saying, Sadie, get back in. We've got to get out of here. And then another man said, water, water. And she said, oh, just a minute. I've got to give him water over there. He's thirsty. And she ran down and filled her cup with water and brought it back and took it over and held his head. Here, drink. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. And then they said, Sadie, get in. We've got to get out of here. We're in the middle of a battle. And she, she, she looked around and then someone else said, oh, oh, my head, my head. And she went over. She said, well, no, I have to take care of this person. They said, fine, we're leaving you. And they got back in their taxi and the taxi took off. And here's Sadie. She was running and someone else said, I want water. And so she ran, took her cup, ran down to the stream, dipped it full and brought it back. And then this one soldier was bleeding and bleeding. She said, I don't have any bandages. I don't have anything. And she said, well, I'm going to have to take my dress and my slip. And she, she went, and she tore that. And then she tore it some more. And she went over and she was wrapping it, wrapping it around so it, the bl blood would stop. And then she took some more of her dress and she tore it. Oh, oh. And she went over and she, she worked all night as fast. 
best that she could, trying to tie people up so they wouldn't bleed to death. And running and getting water and giving them water to drink, Sadie worked all night long. And finally, and she, her poor dress was just torn to shreds. She had just torn it to shreds, but she had to save lives. And finally, the sun started coming up and she had worked all night. Her hair was down like this. She didn't even think about herself. She was just running here and running there. And she heard someone else crying, oh, my leg, oh, my side. She'd run over, she'd try and help them. And do you know what she would do? Some of the men that were really bad, she'd say, I'll pray for you. And so she prayed, oh, Lord God, please be with this gentleman. And then he said, uh, please, can you tell my family I love them? And she said, whoa, whoa, just a minute. And she opened her purse and got out a piece of paper, wrote his name down, the family's address, wrote it all down. She's, okay, I'll tell them. And then he died. And then she'd go to someone else and she would help. She worked all night. It was terrible, but it was wonderful that she was helping, working. She was the only one there helping. Finally, like I said, the sun started coming up and uh, then it started getting daylight and then she kept working and then came an ambulance and a young doctor and he got out and he looked at her. He said, who are you? She says, I'm Sadie Smithson. Well, where are you from? I'm from West Virginia in America. Well, what are you doing here? He said, well, she said, well, I just uh, was uh, uh, touring and uh, we got lost in this field and, and these poor men, she says, I've been holding back hell all night. And he said, Sadie, good thing you were doing that because everyone else was letting all hell loose. And so the young doctor took over and he and she helped him and they went around and took care of the sick patients and the, the wounded patients and they took them on stretchers and ambulances and they took them off. Well, you know, Sadie never forgot that. She, after that, she didn't even care if she toured Europe. She got on a boat after that and went back to America. And as she was sitting on the deck talking to a, one of the passengers on the ship, she told her what she had been doing. And they said, oh, well, I'm sure that they will really want you in the literary society, the Laurel Literary Society, when you get back to West Virginia. And she thought, she says, you know what? I came face to face with death, with hell, with the devil, and with God. And she says, I don't care if I join that society or not. She had seen what really mattered in life not just sitting, sipping tea and reading books. Isn't that an amazing story? I'm so proud of Sadie for doing what she could, helping those men when they were wounded. She did what she could. I am so proud of her, aren't you? And you know what? I know Jesus was proud of her too. Well, you know, after that, she was rewarded. Um, for her efforts, but she didn't do that for a reward. She just saw the need and she worked there all night. Oh, that's such a sweet story. You know what? Someday I want to meet Sadie in heaven and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to thank her. I'm going to say, Sadie, thank you so much for giving up your vacation, stopping that night and not just getting out of there, but taking care of those soldiers that were so wounded. And you know, she had addresses of a lot of soldiers and she sat down and wrote long letters to their families and saying she was right there. Isn't that sweet? Let's pray. Dearest Lord Jesus, thank you so much for brave people like Sadie. Lord, thank you and Lord, help us to be brave and help us to love you more every day. Thank you so much, dear Jesus. For Jesus' sake, amen.